Hi, Milo Minx from MyrisMinxForSale.com. I'm going to show you something that will make everything you've seen about rear suspension adjustment worthless. There's a lot of misinformation out there. It's like the follow the herd mentality is running rampant. Today we're going to adjust the rear suspension on the next Myers Manx for sale. This adjustment is the same as on a Beetle. And the best part is, it costs you nothing. You don't have to buy new spring plates. Not the stepped ones or the adjustable ones. You don't need them. Although, if your bushings are bad, now's the time to get them. Alright, now let me show you something. These are the torsion bars. This one's for a swing axle and this one's for an IRS. They're both the same in the fact that the inner end has 40 splines and the outer end has 44 splines. The German engineers designed it this way. Let me show you why. Okay, here's the next Myers Manx for sale in the garage. Before I measure the height of the frame, I did roll it back and forth three or four times to make sure it settled down. You gotta do that. Over here is a factory service manual. I highly recommend you get one. It tells you how to do everything. It's valuable just for the torque specs alone. All right, let's measure the height. Back here to the bottom of the frame, just a little bit less than 10 and a quarter. Just a little less. And over here, on the passenger side, Ten and one half. All right. Now we're going to jack it up, level the frame, and start the uh, suspension adjustment. I'll explain why it's level in a little bit here. Okay. Now it's jacked up. The frame is level. I put rags between the jack stand and the frame to keep from scratching it. Just how fussy I am. By the way, the blue tape is to protect the frame when I set the body on it. I'm going to put the body on it and mock it up, make sure everything fits the way it should before I take it off and paint it. It saves you a lot of hassle. The front jack stands have the rags under them also. And I'm going to show you that it's level. Right there, if you can see the bubble. Okay. Let's tear things apart. I'll show you how they work. Okay, we have the wheel off, the shock absorber, and the cushion bracket, bumper bracket. That's this thing right here. That's what goes right here and comes up and hits this bumper this frame stop. Oh, one other thing, very important. When you're building a dune buggy, the top shock bolts, make sure you reverse those. Because the body is always right here. And you don't have room to get the bolt out going this way. You have to be able to pull it out this way. Otherwise, you wind up drilling a hole in the body or having to cut this bolt 
which I think is hard and steel and you don't want to do that. The rear wheels have already been aligned. I have these marks here and here to make sure it goes back in the same place. When you line a dune buggy or a beetle, you want to have one eighth inch of toe out. In other words, your rear wheels point out a little bit at the front. When I tell people I can go 75 mile an hour in my buggy, they can't believe it because everything's right. And this is one of the things you want to make sure of. You do align the rear wheels. I'm getting ready to take these last two bolts out. As you can see, the spring plate is twisted out a little bit. So this one's under pressure. What I do is loosen the bottom one. Then I'll start the top one. And look this, you see this gap going in there? That's the pressure pushing it out. So it's under tension. Loosen up the bottom one a little bit more. Yeah, that one springs free now. Then I finish taking out the top one. It may pop because it's still under a little bit of tension like that, but that's nothing. That one got tight again. I know from experience with this, this one, that there's enough room to pull the axle back to expose the spring plate. Let that hang free. play with things a little bit. And also watch your emergency brake emergency brake cable. But that'll be pretty good right there. The next thing I do Take off the cover plate. You see, I loosen everything gradually. That way it doesn't put any unwanted stress on anything. This little thing may not matter, it's just a habit of mine.
Move the camera again. You want to make sure your spring plate is clear of the housing. Maybe I need to go up a little bit more. Like I said, you may have to be very careful with your emergency brake. There's not so much tension on this on a dune buggy, but there is on a beetle. So you take your pry bar to make sure this don't go too far. We'll put a jack stand in there. Again with a rag on it. <laughs> and start working this out until it's off the uh, stopper. There. See, like I said, there's not much tension on a dune buggy because a dune buggy is 600 pounds lighter than a beetle. And that's 30%, that's a lot. So you don't have to put so, so much tension in the swing arms. Okay, that all worked pretty good. You have to make sure you have uh, freedom of movement. Gotta make sure it's clear so it can move. All right. Now, don't pop this out any further than this right now. Just get it off the stop and leave it there. When you build a beetle or a dune buggy, the torsion bars are marked left or right. You gotta make sure you put the correct one on the correct side. They're used to turning one specific way and you wanna make sure they go back in that same way. Now this is the part where you're gonna learn something. What you need is a protractor. Like I said, the frame's level and you wanna measure this angle. And you do that with a protractor. This is a protractor. It tells you what angle things are, which is why I wanted you to level the frame. Because the factory setting on a beetle, the swing arm beetles, when the frame is level, they want this to be at 17 degrees. That way it gives you the correct ride height. Now on dune buggy being lighter, I've been playing with uh, the angle that I need and it looks like about 12 is gonna be good. I don't have everything in it as far as weight, but I got real close and after I get it together, I can do my final adjustments. Cause this is no problem to do. So when I put that on there, get it straightened up look at it it's a little bit less than nine degrees more like eight and a half now all the video videos I've seen they go and turn this one notch. And that's too far. Because if you remember my measurement being a little bit less than 10 and a quarter over here and 10 and a half over there on the passenger side, I only want to raise this side a little bit. This is where the 44 spline on the outside and the 40, 40 spline on the inside 
come into play. Don't be afraid to pull out the tor torsion bar because this is what you have to do in order to get it at the correct rod height. You don't have to worry about marking things because you remember this was eight and a half before. That's all you have to remember. If you want to write it down, go ahead. Now we pull that out. Torsion bar come out with it. Don't put it back in just so I have a reference point. Now, it's the mathematical geometry thing, some kind of equation, that when you turn this one notch, on the inside and then move your bar to the same notch out here it changes it less than one degree less than actually it's about three quarter of a degree because 360 degrees is very similar to a clock i read this 360 degrees around the clock is one full circle. One tick, one second of the clock, is one degree. They just associated, associated it the same way. They also broke that one degree down into what they call minutes. There are 60 minutes in a degree. So when you read the factory service manual, they talk about one degree in 40 minutes. Well, that's like one and a half degrees. But because they designed 44 spline on the outside and 40 on the inside, you can do that. So we had eight and a half, almost nine degrees before. And if you want to raise the rear of the body, you take this, pull it out, and turn it one tooth down. Down is giving you more tension. You probably know that. But when, but when you put the spring plate back on, Remember what it was like right about in here? Put it back in there a little bit. Measure it again. And look at that. It looks like the same thing here, doesn't it? But as I read my protractor, It's uh, like nine and a half, almost ten. That, like I said, is less than a one degree change. Let's put it together and see what the difference is. But first, the more you keep turning this down, the more three quarter of a degree this goes down. So if you're really sagging on this side or that side, you keep on turning it until you get a matching degree between this side and the other side. Let me make a correction. I said the buggy will probably uh, sit at the correct height with 12 degrees. It might be more like 10. Like I said, I still have to play with it. But right now it's nine and a half on both sides. It should level out pretty well. 
Now when you do this on either a dune buggy or a beetle, you want to have both sides the same. Maybe a little bit more tension over there because of the crown of the road. You don't want the right rear hanging down too low. So like I said, either have them even or just a little bit more tension over there on the passenger side if it winds up that way. All right, let's put it back together and measure the changes that I made. After going back and looking at the video, the one thing I wanted to change was marking the torsion bar. You can go ahead and scribe a little line on it. That way you have a reference point. It's not necessary, but it might come in helpful. Okay, now we're going to put it back together. Get a jack under there. Jack it up until it clears the uh, stop. I take a block of wood, put it against there. And knock it in. If you hit this directly with a hammer, you're gonna mess it up. Leave the jack down. Now I'm going to put the cover plate back on. On this dune buggy, I can do this without having it in place and the bolt started, all except for this one, because this only has 10 degrees of tension in it. If you're doing this on a beetle, you may want to get these three bolts started before you lift up the arm because there's so much tension on it that it's pushing the bushing and this is going to be out of alignment. But you can get away with this on a buggy because it's not that much tension on it. All right, let's tighten these up. As you see, as you can see, I draw this in gradually. That way you're not bending anything. Snug them up. Now the book says these get tightened to 35 foot pounds. When I did this before, it seemed like it was a little bit too much. So I set them at 30 foot pounds. Because after all these years, like 45 years, the threaded holes are getting a little bit worn. And 30 pounds is definitely enough to hold these on. All right, let's put the axle back in place. Gotta get your brake cable below the uh, swing arm. The swing arm, swing arm goes on the inside of the axle housing.
There's one just in loose. Remember the top one's under tension. And you can't get the bolt in far enough to uh, get the nut started on it. So what you do is tighten up the bottom one. But just bring it in snug. Don't make it tight. Just bring it in snug. And that draws the uh, top gap much closer. So you can get the uh, nut started. Don't make these too tight at this time. Because you want to take your hammer and make sure that the alignment marks are lined up. about there on the top one. Snug that up a little bit so it don't move. The bottom one has to go back a little bit. Right about there. Rear alignment is important. Tightening this up. I'm not going to final torque these bolts because I may have to take it back apart again anyway. Plus the uh, bumper bracket is not on here yet, but we'll make sure we do that later. All right. Looks pretty good. Let's put it back together on the ground. And we'll see what kind of change that we made. Here's the tools that were used for the job. Jack stands, of course. Torque wrench. That was used to torque the wheels to 85 foot-pounds. A 3 8 flex ratchet. Pry bar. A 3 8 torque wrench for torquing the uh, side cover plate. 18, I'm sorry, 19 millimeter open end wrench, 19 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket, rubber hammer, regular big hammer, piece of 2x4, and the all important service manual. The factory wants a little bit of positive camber in the rear wheels. That's where the top of the wheel is out a little bit further than the bottom of the wheel. 
they want the tubes, the actual tubes, pointing down a little bit at the outside. What that does is it keeps the wheel bearing out in the wheel area lubricated. When you see these swing axle vehicles that are slammed and the axles are pointing up as they come out, they're not getting any lubrication to the bearings. That means uh, it won't be very long before they have to replace them and they might be wondering why. Anyway, the vehicle is back on the ground. Things turned out real well. If you remember this left side was a little bit under 10 and one quarter. And now it's 10 and 3 eighth. Like I said, that little bit of change gives you a little bit of change. Let's see what the right, the right side is, the passenger side. That's the same thing, 10 and a half. That's right where it was before. So, as you can see, you can make very minute changes to the ride height in your, in your vehicle, whether it's a beetle or a buggy. But that's how you do it. And that's what you don't see on YouTube. Maybe I'm the first to present this. But if I'm wrong, you tell me what I did wrong. Do your research before you uh, comment. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you later. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to show you how the suspension moves. I'm going to give it the old bounce test. I weigh like 170, and if you notice, I'm not putting a lot into it. Let's take a look. Just pushing down on the pipes. That's really good for buggy. Now let's go take a look at mine. Okay, we're at the back of my buggy. Let's give it the old bounce test. As you can see, they both respond about the same. And that's good, because I think this one rides great. Later.